Wow, Jill, this scenery is some of the most realistic I've ever seen. Thank you, Rick. Scenery is one area where you could say I'm a real fanatic. So what's your secret? How do you make it look so good? Two words, color and texture. Really? Color and texture? Yep, color and texture. You get those two concepts down and your model scenery will improve greatly. Okay, let's start with color. What's the secret? On many model railroads, scenery colors just aren't realistic. Grass is not always green, rocks are not always gray, dirt is not always brown, and water is not always blue. So how do you get the Turn right the color? trestle floor upside down and glue the bents to it. And then I add all the 4 by 6 inch bracing between the bents. And there we have it, our finished trestle. I also build some cribbing from 4 by 12 inch strip styrene to hold back the roadbed fill at the ends of the trestle. Let's test fit it into the location. I pencil in the horizon line on the backdrop. Here there will be actual plaster hills. And here I'm going to paint some hills on the backdrop. When mixing paint for hills you intend to paint on a backdrop, keep in mind that colors fade and will become more blue with distance. So to get a good color for hills on your backdrop, mix a color that would be good for the foreground, like a nice conifer green shown here. Now, depending on how far in the distance you want the hill to appear to be, add your sky color and some extra blue to the mix. The more sky color and blue you add. Finally, I glued the wings onto the tunnel portal with gap filling super glue. This tunnel also has a complete concrete tunnel liner, so I elected to model the first 12 inches or so of this liner using 30 thousandths inch styrene. Now that the scenery contours are done, I put ordinary 2 inch wide masking tape over the cardboard strips. Adding the masking tape goes quickly and it makes it easy to see how the scenery contours look. Wow, adding the cardboard strips and masking tape has really transformed this scene. Next, I paint the masking tape with a special dirt brown latex paint mix. Using a photo from the area you are modeling, find something with the dirt color shown, take it to a paint store and match the color. Bring the paint home and mix it one to one with some water in a jar. Once the plaster is set up, but is still soft, I gouge into the rock wall and break out some chunks. The breaks form a natural looking rough cleavage in the rock face and is one of the secrets to getting great looking hand carved rocks. This final gouging and poking, once the plaster is set, is key to enhancing the realism of hand carved rock work. After the rock face is set up for a few hours, come back and scrub the face with the paint stripping brush. This weathers the rocks and gives them that believable look of age. Immediately after this, I mist the entire area with water and add more of the original tan dirt along the road embankments to blend the road in with the surrounding scenery. I also lightly dust just a hint of tan dirt over the red dirt on the road. Once all the zip texturing is set up, I come in with a Bright Boy track cleaner and burnish the ruts where the cars have traveled so they look well worn. I use a model car to help gauge where the well worn ruts would be. I apply a bit more gravel on the shoulders of the road and down the middle.